day Dr. Amir. Today the topic of our case study is Tabung Haji Scandal and Illegal Dividend. These are my group members. I'm going to present about the case study background. The government has released a report on Lubaga Tabung Haji highlighting illegal dividend distribution, a write down of assets and illegation of accounting irregularities. The fund has a financial gap of 4.1 billion between its total asset and liability, making it ineligible to pay dividends to depositors. The pre-claimage fund in Malaysia has insufficient assets to cover its debts and has been declaring dividends since 2014. Fund's assets to the liability ratio has increased from an estimated 98 cents to an estimated 1 ringgit. Malaysia fund Tabung Haji must make a profit to distribute dividends to its subsidiary Kiba. Dividend payments made since 2014 has not meet the asset to the liability requirements and Tabung Haji must have profit to distribute. Tabung Haji has a wider gap in finance of over 4.1 billion which is not sustainable. A PwC financial analysis in 2017 claimed Tabung Haji discussed its uh, profitability by structuring transactions to show profits and selling shares in BI My Holding Berhad. The government is embarking on a recovery plan to plug the gap caused by the financial scandal. TH turn around plan and financial recovery. Uh, Tabung Haji's recovery plan includes a special purpose vehicle to rehabilitate and recover underperforming assets for public funds. The SPV will be implemented before the end of this year and under the sub supervision of Bank Negara Malaysia. The plan aims to restore Tabung Haji's financial position and restore confidence. Dividends for the year 2018 will be paid subject to two preconditions stipulated in the law. Tabung Haji failed to record a total impairment of 227.81 million on investment due to the inconsistency in its asset depreciation policy. New management lead by former Bank Islam CEO Dato Sri Yutri Samad is expected to release new disclosure related to the fund. Thank you. There are several offences committed by, by the Tabung Haji, which involve Malaysia's Haji Pilgrims Fund Board and significant episodes highlighting critical issues in financial management and governance. Established to facilitate Malaysian Muslim pilgrimage to Mecca, the fund faced accusations that undermine its credibility and trust among depositors. This, the scandal centered around several key offenses, each contributing to a complex practice and regulatory breaches. The first one is financial mismanagement. At the heart of the scandal were allegations of significant financial mismanagement, Tabu Haji was accused of potentially falsifying its financial statements to hide deficits and present a misleading, healthy financial status. This practice not only mislead depositors, but also masked the funds through financial help, jeopardizing the savings of countless Malaysians who rely on the fund for the pilgrimage. The next offences committed is improper investment. Tabo Haji was accused of engaging in high risk and non profitable investment that did not align with its primary objective of safeguarding depositors' savings. These investment choices raise concern about the fund's decision making process, processes and whether the investment will meet with due diligence and in the best interest of depositors. The third offence committed is conflict of interest. Allegations surface that contracts and investment, investment decisions were influenced by individuals or entities with connections to board members or their associates. This practice not only compromise the integrity of the fund's operations, but also raise ethical concerns about favoritism and the potential misuse of depositors' funds for personal or political gain. The fourth 
offences committed is lack of transparency. A significant criticism, criti criticism of Tabung Haji's management was the lack of transparency and accountability. The fund was accused of failing to provide clear and accurate information to depositors and the public regarding its financial health and investment activities. This capacity hinders stakeholders' ability to make informed decisions and eroded trust in the fund's management. Last but not least is regulatory non-compliance. This scandal highlighted potential regulatory non-compliance and Tabung Haji was alleged to have not fully added, adhered to the legal and regulatory requirements governing its operations. This lack of compliance not only posed legal risks but also indicated failures in oversight and governance, further worsening the fund's credibility issues. The impact of on individuals or organisations due to the scandal of Tamu Haji. Tamu Haji, a fund created to preserve the savings for pilgrimage to Mecca, is in trouble. Individuals and the organisation are affected by the scandal of Tabung Haji that had been established to be a custodian of money meant for people travelling to Mecca for religious purpose. As such, there have been adverse effects on confidence or depositors as well as their financial security, and it has also exposed serious governance and regulatory challenges in the agency. This chapter will bring out impacts on the scandals from various dimensions that have led to mistrust between uh, depositors and issues related with organizational structures such as governance, compliance, business ethics as well as risk management matters. Now I will be um, explaining the impact on percent which loss of confidence and financial security. Depositors' confidence greatly diminished, which is the depositors of Tabung Haji, a fine aim at managing the savings for the pilgrimage to Mecca, have greatly lost confidence and financial security. Uh, threats to saving due to financial mismanagement means such financial mismanagement and lack of transparency in this fund through improper investment have exposed a precarious financial situation that jeopardized the savings of many people. Secondly, uh, the organizational impact that impact the governance and accountability issues. This scandal brought to light some fundamental weaknesses within Tabung Haji governance structure. It meant that there was the need to make sure the institution stuck to its mission, manage its resources with prudence, and it operated transparently. The scandal indicated that strong governance structures were needed including a well-defined board of directors with clear rules and robust internal con con controls. Sorry. Regulatory non-compliance, uh, the, the organizational impact that impact the governance and accountability issues, this scandal brought to light some fundamental weaknesses within Tabung Haji governance structure. It meant that there was the need to make sure the institution stuck to its mission, manage its resources with prudence, and it operated transparently. The scandal indicated that strong governance structures were needed, including a well-defined board of directors with clear rules and robust internal con con controls. Sorry. Regulatory non-compliance. Um, a critical issue was regulatory non-compliance. The management of Tabung Haji failed to respect financial regulation and oversight standards that were in place to protect depositors from instability. This non-compliance exposed the fund to greater personal in, uh, financial risk and undermined depositor confidence. Um, next, next, the ethical leadership and whistleblowing. This scandal mostly returned to the forefront the aspects that were missing or had not been highly stressed, which is ethical leadership and a robust whistleblowing framework. Institutions should make an enforced court codes of conduct that promote ethical behavior and hold people liable for breaches. 
A robust whistleblowing framework would let employees and stakeholders report unethical behaviour without the fear of retaliation, uh, hence possibly averting scandals before they escalate. Finally, uh, risk management practices. The core issue that came out was the need for proper risk profiling and diversification of investment. Especially, essentially, risk management involved identification, assessment and mitigation of potential risk. Minim uh, minimization of impacts from poor performance in any single investment to ensure financial stability. <clears throat> The Tabung Haji scandal highlighted important lessons for financial institutions, regulators, and the community. As an organization that manages Muslim savings for their pilgrimage to Mecca, Tabung Haji revealed key issues in financial management, governance, and regulatory oversight. My name is Nur Shakina. At this slide, I'm going to simplify the lessons to improve financial system. Number one is strengthening governance and accountability, which is point number one is importance of robust governance structure. The Tabung Haji scandal revealed major flaws, highlighted the needs for strong board, clear roles, and robust internal controls to prevent mismanagement and corruption. Number two is regular audits and transparent. Regular Independent audits and transparent reporting are crucial for maintaining financial transparency, fostering trust and reducing the risk of financial mismanagement. Next slide is enhancing risk management practice which is point number one is comprehensive risk assessment. Effective risk management involves identifying and addressing risk. The scandal show the needs for thorough assessment and robust framework to handle financial, operational, and reputational risk. Point number two is diversification investment, which is high-risk investment were a major issue in the scandal. Diversifying investment reduce risk and improve financial stability by minimizing the impact of any single poor performing investment. Next slide is promoting ethical leadership and integrity, which is point number one is cultivating a culture of integrity. Ethical leadership promote integrity. Leaders must prioritize ethics and set a good example with and force codes of conduct ensuring accountability. Next point is encouraging whistleblowing. A strong whistleblowing system enables reporting of unethical behavior without fear. Secure reporting channels and protection for whistleblowers could help mitigate the scandal. The next lesson is ensuring effective regulatory oversight which is point number one, is strengthening regulatory framework. Clear guidelines for financial management, investment, and reporting are essential for maintaining financial integrity and ensuring compliance with legal and ethical standards. Second is enhancing regulatory enforcement. Active enforcement of rules through regular inspection and prompt corrective action ensures compliance and effectively address misconduct. Last lesson is building resilient institution, which is point number one is developing crisis management plans. Institutions need plans to handle crises like financial problems, operational issues, or reputation damage. These plans should cover how to communicate reduced risk and recover effectively to stay resilient. Last one is investing in technology and innovation. Using advanced technology can boost financial management and oversight. It helps with reporting, risk management, and compliance, making operation more efficient and transparent. Moving on to the conclusion. As people of Malaysia, we have a collective responsibility to ensure that this culture of embezzlement and corruption is eradicated from our daily lives. Of course, this can be done by putting laws and practices in place. 
and for us to follow those rules. However, it is also important to know uh, that um, we have to change the culture. And what I mean by that is sometimes we take things for granted in order to show our appreciation of the hard work uh, of public servants, we often give gifts. Well, this is well intentioned and well meaning in their intention and oftentimes pure, it can also be seen as uh, an ulterior motive in order to gain favors. As for the public servants, it can also be seen, it can also create a sense of entitlement uh, in order for them to prioritize you because you've given them a gift. So, as being the people, we have to demand transparency and accountability of those in power and with authority. This is in order to make sure that the standard does not drop. Because for corruptors, um, for people who are participating in corruption, they are some people without principles and they lack ethical or moral compass as seen in the Tabung Haji scandal. It is an institution designed to help Malaysian Muslims to perform their pilgrimage, which is a religious practice. However, for corruptors, this is no line too far to cross. There's no line that they won't cross in order to gain personal wealth. It is an institution that was misused uh, as a way to bail out another struggling entity. The in, their investments also yield no uh, returns. Uh, their shady investments yield no returns. So. It is important for us to empower regulatory bodies to be free from any influence, ensuring transparency and strict regulation oversight to be done. As the saying goes, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts, absolutely. It is very important for us as a people to be aware and wary of questionable practices, be it in our personal daily lives or in our professional work life, which is more likely uh, to happen. It is important to flag it up, to voice out your opinions, and to take actions in order to instill this culture of um, accountability, of transparency, and ensuring that the country is not afflicted by this issue anymore, the corruption issue. That's all for me. Thank you.